Hello YouTube, XCT here. Today we are going to solve Ready, a 30-point machine on Hack the Box. For user, we exploit the Add Remote URL feature in GitLab to SSRF into Redis to add a background job, which then gives us a reverse shell. For root, we can mount the host file system into our privileged Docker container. So the initial port scan shows that there is SSH and this port 5080, so let's look at that one. And here we can see that there's GitLab running. So let's register a new user. And one thing I always like to check is to go for help here, because then we can see the actual version that's running. And this one is fairly old. Um, this is interesting. So we might be able to find some public vulnerability. Um, also, we should check um, if there are any projects or groups, activities, and so on, just um, any content we can really access here. But there doesn't seem to be anything. So let's um, do a quick search in Metasploit. There is this um, GitLab file read RCE from 2020, so this is kind of interesting. So let's look at the description. Um, but it says that this RCE only affects version 12.4 and above, and we are below that, so we can't use that one here. But if you search a bit, you will eventually find this blog post by Live Overflow, and he also has a really good video about this. Um, basically, there's an RCE vulnerability in the exact version they gave us here. And what this RCE is about is there's this um, add repository from a remote URL feature, which allows SSRF. Um, we can make a talk to localhost and there's a Redis running and this Redis is used by GitLab and we can talk to it by injecting new lines basically. And Redis can be used to queue background jobs, uh, which are handled by something called Sidekick, uh, some background task processor for Ruby. And it will allow us to push new jobs. Um, and if we push a GitLab shell worker, we are able to get RCE um, via that way. If you want to learn more about this vulnerability, um, I highly suggest to um, watch the video from Live Overflow. Um, it's really good. So let's scroll down here a bit and see if we can find the payload we can use. Um, first of all, there is a bypass here um, that allows us to access localhost because um, normally this is prevented. But if we use um, this um, specific syntax here, we are still able to reach localhost. Here at the end, it shows us basically the exact payload we have to use, um, which is SRFing into Redis. Um, we have the system hook push here with a GitLab shell worker, class eval, and then our command. So this is exactly what we're going to send. If you look here uh, in Cyberchef, it's basically exactly what we had in the blog post. And here we can put our payload. And I'm just going to use um, what I almost always use. Going to curl um, a bash.now.sh um, reverse shell from my box and pipe it into bash. And this will basically connect back to my machine on port 1337. So let's copy this. Also, let's start listener. And what does X script is doing? Just trying all these different ways here to connect back to my machine. So. If one of them fails, there's a lot of other things being tried. So let's try to send this. Um, we have to create a new project here. And then we want to import it by URL. And here we can post the URL. Let's just um, call it A and try to run it. And here we got some error. Um, requests to local hosts are not allowed. Um, as you can see here uh, in my payload, it still says um, the IP address. But remember, we have to use this bypass I showed earlier from the post, which is this. So let's run it again. And now we got a shell as the user git. So let's spawn a PTY here and look around a bit. If you go to the root directory here, um, there's this root pass, which is very suspicious. One could think that we could just um, su to root here, but it's not working. So this is a bit strange. And if you look into opt, there's a backup directory with some files in it, which sound pretty interesting. Um, so let's look at the Docker Compose file first. And here we can see that it's actually using this um, root pass file here for GitLab. And also something very interesting, this Docker container is running with privilege true. 
privilege too allows you to access basically um, all devices on the host system and therefore you get um, the capabilities of the host machine and basically it allows us to escape the docker container um, if you want to so you have to be very careful with that flag there are also some other files here like gitlab secrets and uh, gitlab.rb so let's look at that one These are pretty big, so I'll just grab for password here. And there seems to be this uh, GitLab Rails SMTP password. Um, so let's try that one for root. And this has indeed worked. I have no idea why um, this would be the SMTP password for the root user. But um, yeah, that's some kind of password re reuse, so I guess it's um, it's possible. Let's look at the root directory, see if there's anything interesting. Not really. There's this um, WIM info file. It's always interesting because you can um, often see what the author has done to prepare the box. Nothing too interesting here. But remember, we had the privileged flag. So, so what we can do, um, if I just execute mount here, you can see that the root file system is on dev sda2. So Basically, we can just mount this. So let's create a directory and then mount. So now we got the full host file system here. Can go to the root folder and read the root flag. And I noticed um, that we forgot the user flag. So let's look at the home directory. There's some, some user called Dude. And he has the user flag in his home directory. So let's get that one as well. And if you're wondering how you can get a shell here, well, on this box, there's an um, SSH key here. So you can grab that one to SSH into the host system. But other than that, there isn't much more on this box. So um, thank you for watching. As always, I'd be happy if you click the like button, subscribe, and see you next time.